Welcome to another BZ Power Set Review. I am BZ Power Reporter who can open doors, XCCJ, and today we are reviewing set 75932, Jurassic Park Velociraptor Chase. Uh, this set was generously donated to us by LEGO for a review, uh, so I hope you enjoy it, and uh, all the thoughts and opinions in this are mine, not endorsed by LEGO. So while we've had a few Jurassic World sets in the last few years, and even a video game based on the franchise, we have not actually had a uh, set from the original Jurassic Park movie. That changes with this set, which features some of the scenes from the end of the movie where the Velociraptor chases everybody around the facility. Already, you can see a couple of different scenes on the uh, front of the box including uh, the uh, scientific egg storage with uh, the amber over there, the uh, control lab where they're accessing the computer, and the door that the Velociraptor is able to open, as well as a kitchen area for them to have an extended chase scene in. If we look at the back of the set, we get a uh, different view of the landscape piece, which showcases some of the action features. Also, recreations of some famous scenes in the movie. Um, but more interestingly, this uh, kind of idea of swapping out the parts of your dinosaur to build your own hybrid. Um, Lego, I think the movie is trying to tell us not to do exactly that. But either way, a lot of interesting stuff there. Uh, this set contains 360 pieces and retails for $39.99. So it seems to be reasonably valued for a license set like this. But enough about the box, let's look at the contents. And here we have the full set of pieces. A majority of the pieces seem to be in the uh, gray scale, so you have a fair amount of black, including a couple of uh, large plates, uh, as well as an angled plate and even a uh, half circle. Uh, then you have a couple of similar pieces in light gray. Um, a few highlights are in dark red. This piece is exclusive to the set, for what it's worth. Um, a few other uh, dark red pieces. A little bit of uh, dark blue. And also an umbrella, which uh, has shown up in a couple of sets, but is still relatively uncommon. You also have one of these uh, double jumper pieces, which are always useful. So overall, it's a nice selection of pieces, but there's nothing too exclusive here. Mostly, you're just going to be building some kind of grayscale uh, rooms inside a building, so nothing too fancy. Uh, you do have the uh, Velociraptor pieces over here. While the dinosaur pieces have remained unchanged since the uh, 2012 uh, LEGO dinosaur theme, this is a, a new design uh, with special printing. So while in some ways the piece selection is a little bit lackluster, uh, they can still come together to make a cool final model. So let's see what that looks like next. First, let's start off with the uh, four minifigures of the set. First, we have Dr. Alan Grant, followed by Dr. Ellie Sater, then the children, Tim Murphy and Lex Murphy. Uh, first, you have the uh, main hero, Alan Grant. He has a cool blue shirt with a red bandana, and he comes with the uh, fedora in tan, um, as well as a weapon to fend off the velociraptors. Uh, he does have a little bit of back printing too, but only one side to the face. One nice feature that the set is, is they include his hair, so you can take that off uh, because he actually loses his hat early on before this scene. So this variation of the character is more set accurate. Ellie is probably the more detailed character. Um, she has a, a nice torso printing, as well as the only character with printing on her legs uh, to show off some cargo shorts and boots um, and a back design. Interestingly, she does have a alternate frightened face, which is uh, definite for the Jurassic Park sets. Tim has his blue jacket, uh, as well as a little scarf and uh, some back printing, short tan legs. And he includes the regular Lego male hair piece, which is uh, interesting to see that one back. Uh, Tim also has an alternate expression, which is a frown. 
Um, I get that he could be like a little sad, but I was expecting a bit more of a frightened face given that these two children seem to be primarily in the movie to be scared out of their minds by the dinosaurs. Lex has a cool uh, lavender printing on her torso and a similar hairpiece, and you pop it off, and she also has a sad expression. In fact, her, uh, her minifig face is almost identical to Tim's. The only difference is that she has eyelash printing on her. But they both have freckles and only frowns, and she suspends a lot of the movie screaming, so that alternate expression kind of seems underwhelming. Of course, um, the minifigs are only partial stars in this set. Ah! The main star is definitely the Velociraptor, which the set is named after. Of course, the Velociraptor design was introduced with the generic Lego dinosaur theme in 2012 and was then reused when they launched the Jurassic World sets, and we see it again. So the design is unchanged. You have the head with a uh, that pops off, and it has a click joint on the jaw. And then you have detachable arms and detachable legs. Uh, for the Velociraptors, the tails do not detach. Uh, what makes this guy so unique is that he has a custom printing um, with this kind of dark flesh and dark brown color that definitely looks more like the Velociraptors from this scene in the movie. So there is something about getting a little bit of variety in your dinosaurs. So I can let a recolor pass because, well, it is movie accurate and it is nice to have a lot of varied Velociraptors, although you get a lot of them in the set sets. One of my overall complaints about these Jurassic World sets, but of course one interesting thing that the uh, box advertised was that you can mix and match your raptors. So if you bring in another character, you can swap off the head. And boom, you've genetically modified your dinosaurs. Uh, it works probably a little bit better for some of the other very dinosaur heads that come with this body. But you can also match it with a T-Rex, so pop off the T-Rex head, and boom, you have a dinosaur with an abnormally large head. Or you can take the legs, and you get this monstrosity. You spent so much time wondering if you could that you never questioned if you should. So, uh, yeah, you can mix and match your dinosaurs a little bit. Um, it's definitely better with some of the varieties that are more similar, but it's an interesting play feature and also falls into the whole collectability aspect of you need to buy all the sets to mix all the dinosaurs up. But this is one way that you can uh, glitch your dinosaurs Galador style. Blah! Moving on to the actual set, uh, you get three primary rooms. You have the uh, main control room in the center, and then when you turn it around, you have the uh, science egg room, as well as the industrial kitchen, which uh, both had a bunch of major scenes play out in them. First, let's look at the science lab. So not a lot of action takes place here, but it's still an iconic set piece. Uh, you have the security camera that's monitoring things which is why Nidri needed to shut off the park to access the eggs. On this side, you can see some of the stickers. You have uh, embryo storage, a restricted area, as well as a danger sign. And then here you have the embryos or uh, bits of amber stored up here, as well as the uh, and the Nidri uses to uh, smuggle out the uh, goods before he's eaten. Um, I do kind of like the circular design of the area. These uh, spike pieces do a good job of kind of rounding it out like rails. But otherwise, there's not a, a whole lot to it, but it's still a nice addition to add. Um, next is the control room, which has a lot of features. Um, first and foremost, you have the uh, door lock. So when you pull out this bar, the door is unlocked. You can barge right through. But if you push this in, the uh, axle connects in and the door is locked. There's still a little bit of wiggle room, so you can uh, still film your uh, fight scene where the raptor is desperately trying to break in. 
but it's a, a decent lock. I am fond of the door because it's entirely brick built, which is kind of unusual, but it's at a different size than the standard Lego door piece. And this way they're able to incorporate the uh, Technic lock in so you can open it up and it ha even has the handles for the Raptor to turn. So that's definitely a nice addition piece. But when the Raptor can't get through the door, it'll come over here and boom, pops through the window. <laughs> the window is a standard Lego pop-out feature. It just connects the two studs and it doesn't connect to the top. So you can slide it in here. It has a cool Jurassic Park logo on it. Um, but it's really easy for the dinosaur to break through. Uh, you also have a cool sticker on the wall of Isle Nublar showcasing the... Uh, island that the uh, Jurassic Park is located on. You have the uh, phone set right here with the uh, dashboard and a red phone uh, featuring the scene where they're in the control room trying to call out for help, but the phone line's dead. You also get a couple of tools in here. You get the umbrella, which was used by John Hammond, and a uh, wrench, which is, you know, a fairly generic thing. Um, the walkie-talkie is another generic bit, but the walkie-talkie does actually get a, a fair bit of screen time in the show where they're calling out to each other as they're trying to reset the power. But I think the uh, coolest details come with the computer screen set here. So you have this nice little desk. It has a keyboard. It even has a mouse as well as a swivel chair. Um, and you have the program on here showcasing where they're trying to turn the power back on especially the door locks. Um, but of course, the coolest bit is the uh, Nidri virus program. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, so that's an awesome sticker. And not entirely film accurate because this program is shut down when they shut off the power. So by the time they're going to uh, reset power, this isn't around anymore. But hey, you can't get all your references in if you're uh, sticking close to the timeline like that. Swinging around, uh, we have a small bit of the industrial kitchen. Uh, this really isn't that substantial, but it does portray the uh, scene from the movie fairly well. You have some shelves here with uh, cooking utensils. You have a frying pan and uh, two pots right here, uh, a chocolate bar, and of course, the gelatin. And better yet, you have the uh, you have a spoon piece, so it's really easy to recreate the gelatin scene from the movie. Yeah. Another interesting bit is the uh, drawers where you store kitchen stuff, but they used it to hide from the Velociraptors. And there's a fair amount of space in there, so you can hide one of the kids inside. Um, I am a little bit disappointed that they didn't include the mirror feature. Uh, because that was a cool trick they used in the movie to uh, fake out the uh, Velociraptor when it was attacking them. But it still has uh, a little bit of room to jump up and down on the aisles looking for the kids to eat. So lots of playability there. Uh, the one other bit you have is the ladder which they use to climb into the uh, air ducts above the ceiling. So yeah, that's the uh, final set. Um, I have to say it does a great job at referencing multiple scenes from the movie and it has enough play features that you can easily reenact those scenes with the minifigures. The kitchen is a little bit small to have a giant velociraptor chase, but it's featured and that's what counts. Whereas the uh, control room and the bit with holding the door shut until they can lock it that's definitely a fun scene to recreate, and you have all the characters for it too. I mean, you're missing a Velociraptor, but you can get by with just one. So for a set that's representing the entire movie, I think this does a pretty good job. Um, there's still a lot more from the movie that could be uh, created set-wise, um, as well as a whole bunch of other characters that haven't appeared in minifigure form, like John Hammond or Dr. Ian Malcolm. Of course, you want another Jeff Goldblum fig, right? But this is still a fairly cool set with, with a bunch of great characters, and it's cheap enough that any Jurassic Park fan should be able to afford it and enjoy this scene. Well, thanks again for watching another BZ Power Set review. 
Make sure to like and subscribe to the BZ Power channel and stay tuned for even more Jurassic World Lego set reviews. Um, and again, a big thanks to Lego to donating this set to us. And you can check out the full picture and text review on bzpower.com where I'll go into a little bit more details, including everything I forgot to mention in the video. Hee hee! Well, thanks again for watching. Ah, ah, ah.